Spontaneous song and dance numbers have rarely seemed so out of place. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 weirdest movie musicals. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at silver screen musicals that are just plain odd, from premise to execution. Whether it's a film about the end of the world or a cult classic so bad it's good, there are two things that all these films have in common. A bizarre story and killer music. Number 10. Rock and Roll High School This rock and roll high school. Rock and roll high school? It's the school where the students rule. Rock and Roll High School plays out like Ramon's fan fiction with a healthy dose of rebelling against the man. I am Miss Togar, and I am the new principal of this school. Riff is on a mission to give her celebrity idol Joey Ramon a song she wrote for the band, appropriately called Rock and Roll High School. She enlists her best friend and much of the student body to cover for her as she skips school to get tickets, only to have them confiscated. Naturally, it all comes to a head with a big middle finger to the establishment. The reception was so good, it not only earned the respect of Ramon's fans, but also an eventual sequel. Wait, wait, hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Stop the music! Number 9. Rock and Rule Evil spelled backwards is live. And we all want to do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock and Rule, also known as Ring of Power, is certainly one of a kind. In a post-apocalyptic world with anthropomorphic animals seemingly picked right from the Goofy movie, an evil rock star kidnaps a beautiful musician to summon a demon. Ah! Yep, you heard that right. This movie features songs by the likes of Cheap Trick, Debbie Harry, Iggy Pop, and more. Though it didn't do well in theaters, it did gain a cult following and helped to prove that animation needn't be family friendly. Seriously, do not put your kid in front of the TV for this one. The PG-13 rating didn't come out until 1984, but boy does this movie ever deserve it. And I'm hoping that you feel the same. Number 8. Phantom of the Paradise Caught up in your wheel and dealing, you've got no time left for simple feeling. You got Phantom of the Opera in one hand and Rocky Horror Picture Show in the other. Slap them together and what do you get? Phantom of the Paradise. Also, throw in a little Faust, because the main antagonist is not only evil, but also literally satanic, having made a deal with the devil to keep him young forever. The main elements that make this film so unique are the character designs, rock themes, and the fantastic music. Like a child who was always poor, reaching out for more, I could feel the hunger growing. The music was so good, in fact, that despite its box office failure, it was nominated for a Golden Globe and an Oscar. Never see my music again. Not here, not anywhere. Do you understand? Never again. Number 7. The Apple. Hey, 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 it's on the, way. the Devil has a name, and it's Mr. Boogalow. The Apple is very much in the same vein as Jesus Christ Superstar, just focusing on a different story. It retells the biblical creation through the perspective of working in the music industry. The serpent is a record label's leader, the forbidden fruit comes in the form of the music industry, and spoiler alert, the movie ends with God flying in on a Rolls Royce. Handy, come back, handy! Though it's often cited as one of the worst films ever made, it's taken on a second life as a beloved, unintentionally campy film in a similar vein to The Room. Yes, you were saying? Number 6. Xanadu Whenever you're away from me, wherever you go. Xanadu was so weird, it literally inspired the creation of the Golden Raspberry Awards, better known as the Razzies. To summarize, it's about one of the mythological muses coming to Earth and falling in love with a man who she encourages to open a nightclub to get away from his mundane job. Hey, what the hell's going on in here? This movie is punctuated by some impressive stars, wild effects, and music so good that the soundtrack actually became a hit around the world. Xanadu, Xanadu. A 
as for the film itself, it is the epitome of so bad it's good entertainment and a cinematic experience unlike any other. Have you ever heard the expression kiss by a muse? That's what I am. I'm a muse. Number five, Cannibal the Musical. You've always said you wanted to get out of Utah. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I distinctly remember you saying you wanted to get out of Utah and go east. No, I didn't. Before South Park and the Book of Mormon, Trey Parker and Matt Stone created Cannibal the Musical. They're known for their tongue-in-cheek and often offensive humor, and this movie is no different. It's a black comedy loosely based on the true story of Alfred Packer, who returned alone from a prospecting trip, claiming the group was driven to cannibalism in the cold of winter. We have to eat something. Maybe we should sacrifice somebody. The film quality is charming, the songs are catchy, and it received not only a huge fan base, but also inspired stage adaptations in the US, Canada, and Europe. It also enjoyed a VHS, PSP, and DVD release complete with a drunken director's commentary. The sky is blue and all the leaves are green. The sun's as warm as a baked potato. Number four, Labyrinth. Nobody knew what kind of magic spell to use. If you're a fan of Jim Henson, David Bowie, or New Age fairy tales, Labyrinth may just change your life. Although it initially did poorly and proved to be Henson's last film, it lived on because of its faithful audience and enduring merit. Its practical effects refuse to look dated, and its music is sublime. It even received a comic sequel called Return to Labyrinth. At its worst, it's a glorified David Bowie music video, co-starring the Goblin King's crotch. I have been generous up until now, but I can be cruel. But at its best, it's an original take on fantasy tropes that makes the girl the hero of her own story, helped by a supporting cast of charming creatures that only Henson could bring to life. Come, let us be brothers henceforth. Number three, Little Shop of Horrors. There are many interpretations of the message behind Little Shop of Horrors, from the dangers of capitalism to the country's fear of integration. This cautionary tale, adapted from the Alan Menken and Howard Ashman musical, was ultimately nominated for two Academy Awards. I'm just a mean green mother from outer space and I'm bad. The story features a nerdy florist, a sadistic dentist, and a bloodthirsty extraterrestrial plant. A modern take on a Greek chorus accompanies us on the journey. Test audiences convinced director Frank Oz to change the original musical's ending, where Audrey II is victorious, with a happier one. However, in 2012, a special edition DVD was released with the original ending, met with nothing but praise from old and new fans alike. <laughs> Number two, Repo, the genetic opera. So you think Mag has pipes? Well, it's my turn to shine. Repo, the genetic opera can only be described as an emo kid's fever dream. Inspired by the repossession of property, Darren Smith and Terence Zdunich spin a tale where even unpaid organ transplants are ripe for the taking. This rock opera is a gore fest set out like a cinematic graphic novel. The passion behind it is evident, the costumes avant-garde, and the music is equal parts solemn and absurd. No! Throw in spy kid Alexa Vega and a pinch of Paris Hilton and somehow it works. Despite its limited release and Razzie nominations, the film inspired such a cult following that it returned to theaters with shadow cast performances and even had a successful road tour. With the dead, I'm joining Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I got faith in all of you. So let's get going. I got a place to rehearse this afternoon right around here. Hey! And it's free! All right! Hey! Number one, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Then at a deadly pace, it came from outer space. And this is how the message ran. The Rocky Horror Picture Show is a deliciously incoherent movie that goes a little something like this. A couple gets lost and finds themselves at the house of an alien mad scientist and his ragtag crew 
including a satanic handyman in love with his sister. They also host a birthday dinner where they're treated to a meal of meatloaf. Literally. That's a rather tender subject. The film's reception spawned a pseudo-sequel, also co-written by Rocky Horror's Jim Sharman and Richard O'Brien. You need a bit of of course, the audience callouts, props, and physical gags in the Shadowcast performances make for a unique experience that you just can't get from watching the movie at home. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.